the snap port first. Connor took you through a few bits yesterday about the editing, but today, as I mentioned, I'm going to bring you through the behavioral supports. So I'm just going to start my timer just to make sure we stay within the 20 minutes. Uh, so within the behavioral supports, there's different types of behavioral supports. You've got visual supports such as visual timers, you've got first and thens, you've got mini schedules, you've got scripts, and you've also got social narratives. And where to find them is actually in the topic section of your snap port first. So if you look to the left hand side of your screen, you'll see the navigations toolbar and the basically you'll see the topics which is the fourth one down and all of our topics the pre-programmed topics would have a behavioral support section built into them now you can only see your behavioral support section when you look at a grid size of three by four and higher so if you had a smaller grid size that wouldn't actually appear you'd have to actually search them and pull them up and do some editing to get them back up but say for example if i jump into the topic about bubbles you will see on the right hand side now of my screen you've got this life boy kind of a symbol it's so the red and yellow one saying supports i click on that particular one and you'll see you have different types of the uh, behavioral supports so the first one as you can see is the visual timer then you've got the first and then then you've got the mini schedule you've got your script and you've got your social narrative so if i was to click on say for example the visual timer when i select that here now you'll see that the visual timer has a countdown up the top and you'll see there's this red line that's actually counting down at the top from five minutes so that will count down automatically in the background and the great thing about this support is that you'll see in some softwares when you select a visual timer it's on the screen and you can't actually do anything else but with this activity for example we can say we're doing visual you're, we have the visual timer set for five minutes so we're going to use the communications boards on the software maybe for five minutes maybe do an activity i can jump into my topics and i can go off and i can say we're doing bubbles for five minutes and i can go into the topic and we can communicate using the communication board here so if i jump back to supports then i can cancel the timer if needs be and there's just the x up the top right to do that before I go through the other behavioral supports, I just want to draw your attention as well to another section that has different types of visual timers built into it. Just if we go back to the left hand side of our screen where we have the navigations toolbar, down below you have dashboards at the very last one. If I select dashboards, you'll see there's a button for visual timers. When I select this, you actually have a list of loads of different types of visual timers from one minute all the way up to 60 minutes, which means when we edit the timers, we can actually select one minute all the way up as far as 60. But these are already pre-programmed into the software. So if you just wanted to use these, you can very simply press one, so a 10 minute one, and you'll see automatically your 10 minute timer has started on the top with the red bar counting down. Okay, so I'll just jump back now to my other page. So here we have the supports. So I'm going back to the page on the bubbles and I mentioned I had the visual timer. Next we've got the blow bubbles and you'll see you've got first and then. So for example if I select first, oh geez I'm just going to change over the sound on this there now for you so you can hear this. Okay so. First open the lid then use the bubble one to blow when you press the symbol they'll automatically select for you just going back to i suppose the um idea behind these symbols themselves so there's different types of symbols and they're great for you know cognition or scheduling or even activity selection as well so say for example if we were in school you know maybe it's a circle time so you want to actually do you know first and then around circle time first circle time then you know get her books out something like that you can have those different types of ones as well so also as well you can have you know um, it's supposed to be able supports around you know the aphasia page set so i'll go through that more in more detail when i show you the new feature which is the whiteboard but i'm just going to go through the first and i'll say the mini schedule next for you so the mini schedule you'll see then you've got your first first get out the bubbles next carefully blow without knocking over the bottle then put the wand back in the bottle last clean up so you'll see the layout of this mini schedule is actually very similar to the first and then. The only difference obviously being that the first and then has your two sections and the mini schedule has your four. So you can actually add in those extra two within the mini schedule. Next then we've got under bubbles, we've got the scripts. So you'll see the scripts here. I love bubbles. Look, it's going high. I want to catch it. And the scripts are very good as well. For example, you know, we have the, as in the aphasia page set and also for kids. So for adults and kids, the aphasia, or sorry, the um, scripts are great as well. In the case of for adults, maybe you do scripts for say, going to the shop or going maybe to the, you know, the doctor and things like that, where you can actually have the conversation pre-programmed into this 
script section or maybe for kids as well maybe kids with asd as well you can use it for you know say simple things like maybe going on to a bus at school say for example that conversation with the bus driver you know just getting familiar oh um i want to get a ticket for the bus can I sit down now, please? Things like that. So just introducing those scripts into that then as well. So what I'm going to show you is obviously I just showed you where to locate them and the different types of ones that are there. So what I want to do now next is I want to kind of, I suppose, show you how to edit them. And to edit them, you very simply, pretty much similar to what we were, Connor was doing yesterday, you press the settings cog up the top right hand side with the pencil through it. And what we need to do then is we need to press the plus. So we need to add a button. Okay, so I can press the plus on any of these gray sections and automatically then you'll see you greeted with the label and the message. So the label is going to be my visual time. Okay, so I'm just giving it a name. Okay, so I'm not going to worry too much about what's on the button. I'm just going to worry about the actual visual timer itself. So once I've created that label, that name, basically I know now it says visual timer. I now need to go down to this section where it says actions. That's below the image there. You'll see a magnifying glass camera and a filter. And you go down to the actions and you press the trash can. Because we don't want it to speak or insert message. So I can press the trash can and press delete. My next um, action is to add this new action. So I'm going to select add action. And what I now need to do is I have a list of different actions I can select in the software. I need to scroll down and I need to find the actual actions that I want. You'll see there's a section here, behavioral supports. So in this particular case, I'm selecting a visual timer. When I select the visual timer, you have the options to play alarm when finished. I can leave that one on or ask for time when button is selected. I can turn that one on or off as well. So I leave that one off. The next section here you'll see then is the five minutes. So I can select this and this is where I can select my timer itself, how long I want it to be. So I can select it from one minute all the way up as far as 60 minutes. So if I just bring it down here now, I'm going to have two minutes and I'm going to press done. Okay, so now that's selected, I'm now going to press my button and automatically now you'll see that that two minute timer has been selected up the top. So I'm going to leave that run there now. Actually, I can't leave that run because I must go into the settings again. So I'm going to press X there now for you. What I want to show you now next is the first and thens. So for the first and thens, I'm going to press the settings cog. And again, I do the same action again. I add my button. So this time I'm just going to call my first and then the same name first then. Okay. And then again, what I need to do is I need to go down to the actions. And again, I need to delete that action. So I press the trash can and I press the word delete on the right hand side. Next, I need to add that action and that action again being the first and then I scroll down and I look for my first and then. So this then gives me the screen where it gives me the title, the first and the then. So the title being the name. So we'll say we call this school. Okay. And then my first. So select here to fill out your first. So I select that and my first is going to be sit at desk. Okay. So then I have my label, which is what you'll see on the button. The message is what it will speak and the image that I want to show. So if I can select that, then I can select the different types of images. So maybe I want this particular image with the desk and the chair. If I'm happy with that, if that looks like my desk, I can press done and then I press next. So you'll see up the top right of that white box, you've got the word next. I select that and then I have the option to add in then. Okay, so after sit at desk, open okay so again my label is the open book which is what you'll see on the button my message is open book and here's the picture of the book so maybe i want to change the image of the book maybe i want this particular one instead with my homework on it i can now press done so now when i'm finished my first and then i can press save so when i press done up the top right hand side to save all those changes and to actually use my button you'll see now when i select my button I've got my first and then. So my school topic there is up top, my title. Then I've got my first, which is sit at desk, and my then, which is open book. So now when I press my buttons. First, sit at desk, then open book. Okay. So that is your first and then. So the mini schedule and the scripts, again, are pretty much the same concept. So we press the settings cog up the top right. I press the plus button again. So I'm adding a new button again. Again, I am giving it a label. So this time it's going to be a mini schedule. Now I'm just calling it the names that they basically are, but obviously you can create a different label depending on what the actual mini schedule is as well. You know, I suppose because mini schedule itself doesn't really make too much sense. So maybe for example, I can change this to school. And then you have maybe a different image as well. So maybe you want to select the images here. Maybe this is my school. 
I can press done. And again, I delete my action, which is the trash can. I go over to the right hand side, press delete, and I add my new action. And this time it's going to be my mini schedule. So I'll scroll down again. It's around halfway down the screen here and we select mini schedule. So again, title, if I'm happy again to call this school, select my first and my first in this case is going to be sit at desk. Okay, I'm happy with that. I am okay, but I'll change my image again. I press done. And my next then is going to be open my school bag. Okay, so again, I look at the image if I want to change that. And maybe this is my school bag. I'm happy with that. I press done. Then I press next. And my next is get my books. That I need to change my image again. So I'll just filter that. So it just types in books. So these are my books and I can press done. And then finally, my last one, when I press next is listen to the teacher. And again, we have an image of a teacher. Maybe I'm okay with that one. So now what I can do is press save. Okay, so I'm going to press done again up the top right hand side. And now I'm going to uh, select my image here of school. And you'll see now I've created my first and then so. First, sit at desk. Next, open my school bag. Then, get my books. Last, listen to the teacher. So you'll see there that is the mini schedule. So as I mentioned, again, going back to the scripts again, so I'm going to create a script this time. So what I'm going to do, for example, is maybe create a script around, you know, the child getting on the school bus, basically. So simply, again, we just press the settings card up the top, right? I press the plus button to create my button. So I can say going to school is what I'm going to call this. Okay, so I've created that button going to school. I can change my image again. So maybe I want to have the school bus. School bus. If I'm happy with that particular image, maybe it's this one in here, I can press done. So now again, I'm creating a script. So I'm pressing the trash can and I'm pressing delete. Oh, sorry. Back here, press the trash can and press delete. And then again, we're adding our action. So I scroll down again, halfway down the page and I will find my script. Okay. So my script, my title is getting on the bus. Okay, and this time I add my line. So my first one is going to be, hello, how are you? As we're speaking to the bus driver. Okay, I'm happy with that one. I press next. And I can say, can I have a ticket, please? Okay, maybe I want to change that. So there's an image of a ticket and I can select that one and then press done, and then I press next. And um, thank you, where can I sit? Okay. We're going to select the word for sit, or the image for sit. So maybe we'll use this particular one and press done. Okay, and then we press save. So now when I press done up the top right, and again, I'm going into my symbol, you'll see you have your script here. You can actually have a maximum of 10 lines for your script within this as well. So when I select the buttons here now. Hello, how are you? Can I have a ticket, please? Thank you, where can I sit? Okay, so you'll see you have your script then there. Okay, so that is your behavioral supports, and that is your first and then your mini schedule, your visual timer, and your script. So the next thing I want to show you as well is a new uh, page that has actually come from the aphasia page set, and that is the whiteboard. Now, the whiteboard originally for the, uh, I suppose, for adults on, uh, for aphasia, this was for even, you know, you could use for even visual supports, maybe for, you know, conversations and things like that. So you could have different colors on your whiteboard saying, for example, hi, my name is Michael, and then you know, the other person can reply, hi, my name is Connor and things like that. So you can really reply using the whiteboard then and have that conversation. And what's great then, I suppose, you know, for children, especially children with ASD, you could use that for a visual support, for example, you know, even if it was the case, the child couldn't find the symbol for maybe the dog on the software. Instead, what you could use is, for example, the whiteboard and having the whiteboard, then they can draw the symbol. And then, you know, once you can see, oh, this is the dog, then we can now use the modeling to actually look for that particular symbol within the software. 
okay? So to add that, you very simply press the settings, okay? And what we want to do is just create a button first of all, okay? So again, this is an action. So what I'm going to do is press delete and I'm going to press add action, okay? So now what I need to do is I need to search for the particular one. So we scroll down. What do I do instead, actually? Link. This has actually been moved. Just bear with me now a second. Okay, so I'll just go back to the actions there now again. Add actions. Uh, what I'll do is I'll actually search because then I can actually show you where it is then. So we've got whiteboard, there we have apologies. So it's open whiteboard. Right? They had moved it a small bit since the new update. So we have that there now, open whiteboard. Okay. So now I've select open whiteboard. So that is my button. And again, it is a button. So again, if I want to change the label, maybe I can say it's my whiteboard. I can select my whiteboard, okay? So now we have my whiteboard. And again, if I want to change the image, I can select the different types of images. So maybe it's this particular one, or maybe you just want the whiteboard pens or the actual image itself. The great thing about the software as well is that maybe you have a whiteboard in school as well. Maybe it's an interactive whiteboard or something like that. You can also as well, using the camera symbol, you can see there's a camera symbol at the top right. You can also use that particular button and you can use that then and take the photo of that whiteboard and use that as your image. So in this case, I'm just going to use the standard one that's there and press done. And when I press done up the top right hand side, I'll select that. So you'll see there's a link now to a new page. When we select this particular one, it brings me to the whiteboard. So this is what I was mentioning a while ago in the case of the conversation. So say, for example, if I want to type in blue, I can say, hi, my name. That's quite hard to do this with a mouse. It'd be easier, obviously, with your fingers when you're doing the touch screen, but here we have that, Michael. And then again, obviously, you can select the color and we can change that to maybe green, my is Connor. Okay, so you can see there now you can actually respond doing that. The great thing about the whiteboard as well is you can actually save your whiteboards as well, or in the cases that I mentioned earlier, you could use it as a visual support as well. So see, for example, you have the bottom right hand side, you've got add an image. So we can click on add an image, you can pick a photo that's already on your software, or you can also take a photo. Now for the moment, I can't take a photo because my camera's on the webinar, but you can select that and using the device, the communication devices as well, front and the back camera can take a photo for you. And then you can maybe have a conversation around that. So say for example, it's maybe at the restaurant, you have the photo of the restaurant, you know, conversations around the restaurant, or even if it's family and, you know, talking about the people that are in the photo, then it's fine. So to clear that, you very simply can press the clear button down below here, and you can clear the whole lot. And you can start from scratch again. And then you can have new whiteboards as well. So you can create multiple whiteboards as well, if you want to as well. So that is the behavioral supports and the new edition as well of the whiteboard. I think we're just coming up around the 20 minute mark there now. Mm -hmm.